Finally, a series on binary exploitation. Let's do this. Welcome to a new club banger on binary exploitation. I'm pretty excited about this whole album. We're gonna explore the world of low level. We're gonna try to offend some binary executables and it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, let's get started. Before we jump in, I'd like to clear one thing. Why am I making this series? Well, I do know there's good content out there on the internet already, but I'm making this because I've got a couple of reasons. One of them is that I have little to almost no experience in this field, so I wanted to learn and also make videos at the same time about them so that some of you can learn with me. It's like taking y'all on a learning quest with me. Okay, maybe I lied. That's not the main reason. The main reason is because the word pwn is in my name. So yeah, that's that. All right, so the goal is to become a pro Jedi 1337 samurai ninja warrior. Yeah, that's probably not gonna happen, but at least we'll be able to understand some core concepts, some mind blowing things and eventually have fun breaking code. Anyways, the prerequisites for this series is very simple. If you're a basic Linux user and you can read some code, not all of it, obviously, I'll explain line by line in the future videos, but at least some code like conditions and loops in any programming language, you should be just fine. All right, with that's out of the way, let's jump into the ocean. We're gonna start with executable files. Let's try to understand them a little bit. Executables are basically standalone files that you can run as a process in an operating system. We're gonna be dealing with Linux for now, maybe Windows and ARM in the future, but for now, just Linux. This means that we're gonna be mostly working with ELF file formats, which stand for executable and linkable format files. These are similar to your .exe files in Windows. Well, kind of, but they're actually more than just executables. But we'll be just, you know, going over the executable types of ELF files. Let's say you have this C program, a simple program that just prints out Hello World. This program is fed into a compiler like GCC, which parses the code and then generates some machine executable code. Then you can go ahead and execute this file to see the output, which is hello world. Makes sense. But the compiler just doesn't directly compile your C code into executable machine instructions. There's a bunch of intermediate steps that actually happen, like generation of assembly code, uh, object files and linking them, all kinds of stuff before producing the final executable file. The L file format and the process lifecycle in Linux might actually feel a bit complicated at this point in time, but I'll try to give you a high level abstraction of these topics. I will oversimplify a lot, so proceed with caution. An L file is basically a binary file, and we already know this. This binary file is made out of these binary chunks. These chunks are basically things like headers and sections. Headers usually contain meta information that helps the process of execution. Sections are simply just other chunks of binary data that serve a specific purpose. Like for example, the .text section has the code that needs to be executed. And there's the .data section, which contain initialized variable values. When the ELF file gets executed, it becomes a process. And this process has its own memory where all these sections get mapped onto. Then there's also these different data structures that get allocated on the memory for this program to function properly. One of them is stack. We'll look at attacking stacks in the future, but for now, just remember that each process gets its own memory space and it follows some kind of a layout. Then each of these instructions is read from the .text section that we talked about, which contains the code, and then it's executed by the CPU one by one. So that's a highly simplified overview of how the L file looks like and also how it executes. If you heard the dogs barking at this point, 
just remember that it's not coming from the video. It's it's all in your head. You're you've been compromised. Your head's just playing tricks on you. That's all it is. Please continue watching the video. Now let's take a quick peek inside the ELF file. I know we've been talking about it, but now it's actually time for us to look into it. Like, you know, like 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 a stalker. Yeah. I've written a simple C program which reads an input from the user and simply outputs uh, the same thing with the message. Let's compile it with GCC. We provide the source file which is the hello.c and the dash o is for the output file. Uh, basically the file that's going to be generated by the compiler. Yeah and also ignore these warnings for now. Uh, you will learn about them in the upcoming videos but for now just completely ignore them. Now that we have our executable file, let's go ahead and run this. We give it some input and we get back the message, just as intended. Let's run strings on this executable file. Strings is a program that reads the file and outputs only the human readable strings which are present inside the executable file. This is actually cool because we can find some strings inside this file, like in our case we can find the word hello that we use to print out the message. If you want a hexadecimal representation of this file, then you can use a command called xxd. This will show you a hexadecimal dump of this file and on the left side as you can see we have the hexadecimal bytes of this file and on the right side it's the same but it's ASCII. Also remember that I said ELF files have some headers and they list out some sections and stuff like that. Let's actually check them out. There's a program called readelf. This will basically parse the ELF binary file and outputs this parsed information. If we check out the help options, we'll see that there's this dash s option, which will basically show the sections of a binary. So let's go ahead and try that out and surely we do see the sections. Of course at this point in time we don't really understand what they all mean but it's always fun to poke around. Also I think it's important to overshoot like this while learning because it's it's going to take your mind to a new territory. Even if you don't entirely understand the big picture you will still pick up some smaller pieces of this big picture which obviously is going to help you in the future. Alright that's it for now but I've got a small announcement to make. I've created a Discord server. If you guys have any questions, shoot them there. Myself or Kanye West is gonna answer your binary questions. So that's all for now. Pwn Function, AKA Lil Endian signing off. Yeah, that's my new rap name, by the way. All right, um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.